Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. How does the Holy Spirit help the saints to rise and to excel? The ministry of guidance. The Holy Spirit helps men by guiding them. Number one is the revelation of the will of God. Number two is to guide you. John 16, we read it earlier, 12 and 13. 13 says that when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Please look up. This is powerful. I wish I had time to explain this scripture for you. That means even when you are standing in the truth, you must be guided for it to profit you. Just because you are in proximity with the truth does not mean you will be blessed by it. The truth can kill. Just because it is truth does not mean it will bless automatically. Truth is like a knife. You can hold a knife in a way that it will injure you. A knife that is supposed to cut the vegetable to make the food that we eat. Because you did not hold it well, it can still injure you. Women will tell you there are times that they did not hold the knife well. And they ended up injuring themselves. The, a beautiful tool that was supposed to help enhance your efficiency. When Satan tries to use a lie and it does not work, he will use the truth to kill you. Ask Jesus. When he came to Jesus, he said, turn this stone to bread. Jesus said, it is written. The next time Satan spoke, he said, it is written too. Since it is truth, let's use truth now. It is written. Sanctify them by your truth, he says. Thy word is truth. So it is not every time he will come looking like a wizard. There are times he will speak like a preacher and mislead you with relevant scriptures into derision. Just because it is truth does not mean it will bless you. The Holy Ghost. This is where many people who just embrace scripture and ignore the Holy Spirit. This is a piece of literature. This is a piece of archaeology. This is a piece of history. When you open it, it is a book. When the scrolls are unlocked, it becomes the word. This book you see must be both opened and unlocked. There are seals that close it. It is opened to the optical eyes, but not yet open in the spirit. And it is dangerous to read the book when it is just open and not unlocked. Because you will find many coincidences. At the end of it, you will end up hating the Bible. Because it will look like a mix of nonsense. Written by people, arguments here and there. A lying spirit came from the Lord. What does that mean? Do not be over-righteous. What does that mean? Because all those things are unfruitful to the mind. If the only thing you do is to open the book. Only the spirit sustains the, the capacity. And you will see a scripture you've been reading forever. And you will stand in tears. There are times that you can carry one verse for days and you are sitting there and it's as if you found a gold mine and you are rejoicing over a scripture, you quote it and someone says, that's nice, you are learning scripture, but something in the name of Jesus, the miracle of open eyes, guided by the spirit, in the name of Jesus, may that begin to work in your life from tonight. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit guides men. There are various ways he guides. There is a difference between leading and guiding. Or there is a difference between direction and guidance. Let me tell you how to direct. Please look up. If I'm to direct you out of this auditorium, here's what I'm going to say. Move straight, turn right, and be on your way. That's direction. Guidance will say, follow this way. There is a step. Be careful. That step can hurt you. So just because you know the road, you do not know the contours, the very things. The Bible says the Holy Spirit guides. He does not just lead. He leads, but he guides. Many of you have been led. You need guidance. You are in the place of the will of God, but how to navigate the steps, now you do not know. He told you this man is the one who God will use to lift you. Now you are with him. But what do you do? 
do you walk up to him and say you have been wasting my time god said you are the one who will live you see now direction is correct but you need guidance is the holy spirit who will guide you and say you know what um take a meal and just go and give him and bless him and don't say anything that's guidance you now go there and say oh who is this what do you do i am so so and so thank you you are the kind of person we're looking for see me tomorrow two of you can be led but only one was guided most people have not opened up themselves to be guided by the spirit you can be in the right environment and still weary yourself you need to pray guide me guide me guide me spirit of the living god guide me guide me for when he guides you in addition to his leadership there is no darkness for you eventually it may not make sense while he's guiding you ladies and gentlemen please hear me it is like driving again when you plot the map on your phone of a location it tells you okay you'll get there in one hour you see but it doesn't just tell you the location it keeps zooming and you, you keep finding out that it is helping you is that true and there are times you go to a road and it is closed it will reroute it again and show you how to still get there direction is not the problem it was not your fault someone decided to put a barricade on what would have been the road it takes guidance it now reroutes and recalculates the time guidance let's finish up the last way the holy spirit helps the believer to rise to excel to make impact and advancement for the kingdom is through the ministry of empowerment the third dimension of his help is through empowerment hmm. this is powerful he empowers us it is true and there are two dimensions to this empowerment there is the empowerment within and there is the empowerment upon this is where we'll pray the empowerment within has the assignment to produce christ likeness to produce growth and maturity every time you see spiritual immaturity there is no stature and character in the believer he has ignored the ministry of empowerment within he said my little children of whom i travel until christ be formed in you when the holy spirit empowers you regardless where you came from regardless the natural traits and limitations that came with where you came from he will grant you grace there are times that you who should be angry and speak to anybody and say when i'm angry even god gives way you see all those kinds of stains they they fade away because there is an empowerment within most of us do not have that strength in the inner man the bible says in ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 i like amplified it says finally be strong in the lord amplified says draw your strength from him and be empowered through your union with him there is an implication if christ dwells in you in truth there must be an effulgence of the character of the kingdom is that true I should know that Christ is at work in you because it should be difficult to find out whether you are an Igbo man or Yoruba or Hausa. I should even be at a loss trying to trace you to an earthly place because you have been so transformed. You almost do not carry any negative traits that is associated with your territory. I should be surprised when you tell me, can anything good come out of Nazareth? But he's walked upon me listen to me it is not enough to just embrace the engracing the anointing the empowerment of the spirit starts from within so you find out that he empowers you to kill some things they just die like that anger bitterness all of these things your life changes people who look at you and say i used to know this person but you are changed not by your ability but by the ability of the spirit the empowerment within produces Christ likeness, produces growth and maturity, stamina within. Then the empowerment upon. In fact, let's look at Ezekiel 36 27. Let me just give that one scripture. My apologies for stretching the time. It says, And I will 
put my spirit within you. Say within you. Someone say within you. And cause you to walk in my statutes, he says. And you shall keep my judgments and do them. Why? Because there is an empowerment within. Within. How do you love in such a wicked world? How do you show kindness in such a wicked world? You have to be empowered. Your feelings will betray you a thousand times. You will need an empowerment from within. Most people, what you call the fruit of the spirit, you see, listen, you can impart a gift to a handkerchief, but you can't impart the fruit of the spirit to a handkerchief. A gift can come on anything animate or inanimate, but a fruit is proof of maturity. There is no tree that has a fruit at infancy. For every single gift, he matched it with a corresponding fruit. By the time the workings of the spirit is within you, let me tell you sincerely, you will truly become another man. That when people look at you, the only example they can tell is Jesus Christ. And it does not matter the background. It's a progressive work of the spirit. But that it is sponsored by the empowerment of the spirit. And so you can love even when it, is, it does not seem possible to love. You can give. You can be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity. Are we together? You who would not even help children before. Now something has happened to you. You are changed. Let me tell you the truth. I submit to you that if you have walked with the Holy Spirit and it does not translate to potent conversion from within, either your experience is a lie or you have not maximized that ministry of empowerment within. Hallelujah. Because it does not seem marketable to embrace the power within. Nobody will most likely sow a seed for you for being very nice. If you... If you raise somebody from a wheelchair quickly, he can say, come and take this estate and go. But for being a person of solid character, the results usually take a long time before you see the benefits. So most people will not want to pursue that. It is easy to pursue the one that brings, has a lot of charismatism around it. But you see, in the realm of the spirit, let me tell you, the things that may not seem to matter in this realm, that is what measures stature in the spirit. Are we together? It says, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. There was a mindset. There was an understanding. The workings of the spirit. Hanging on the cross. And yet looking at John. And looking at all these people. Same thing happened to the Matthias Philip. Uh, uh, when when Philip was, uh, Stephen was about to be Matthias. Empowerment within and then now empowerment upon Micah 3 8 Micah 3 8 the spirit helpeth but truly I am full of power how by the spirit of the Lord I am full of power power to do power to manifest power to go to the nations power to pray power to heal the sick Power to redefine possibilities in the lives of people. No man was born automatically with power, ladies and gentlemen. Men and women, by blindly walking with this spirit of grace, they encounter tremendous levels of power. I can tell you with all humility, if you truly encounter the genuine power of the Holy Spirit, not a semblance of it, your life will never be the same. Not as a preacher, not as a businessman. You may have heard me say it. He said, thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. He does not anoint cups. The cup only shows what is on your head. If your cup is empty, don't blame the cup. It is that there is nothing on your head. You anoint my head. It is not my head that shows it. My cup runneth over. I'm under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. I am under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. We're going to pray now. 
Look at what the Bible says. This will be my parting scripture. I can do what an arrogant statement. How can a man stay in the world of men, Pastor Jerry, and dare to make such a statement? You can do all things. Do you know how many things are there to be done? I can do all things means I can go anywhere. I can see anybody. How dare you make such a statement? Where did you come from? Who is your father? What leverage did he give you? Yet the apostle will say, regardless what you bring before me, here is my verdict. I can do how many things? <laughs> now listen, listen, listen. You go and stand in front of the road in your city and shout this statement and see how many people will look at you and say i used to respect you thinking you are humble but i'm disappointed you can do all things how do you talk to a man who does not want to talk to you it's part of all things how do you raise the money to build something of a, a multi-billion project with integrity how do you lay hands on someone who has been sick for 25 years stage 4 cancer i can do all things please hear me run conference i came to release a grace on you tonight please listen please listen i want to show you a mystery and then we'll pray i can do all things who makes such a statement in our world today did you not know what happened during covid you can do all things are you the one who keeps your life? Paul would say, I can do all things. If he stopped there, we would have edited that statement and charged him for foolishness, immaturity, pride, and the manifestation of the flesh. If Paul stopped there with those five words, we would even legitimately edit that and strike it and say in learning Paul learn other aspects but when you get here jump it but here is my message tonight leave the first five read the remaining one to read through Christ one more time now read the first five then finish it with the first five are you ready one to read You didn't get it right. Through Christ, which strengthened me, I can do all things. So he tells you, if you see me moving from nation to nation, be careful while you clap. Explain there is an agency. When you see that I can do all things, it is not because I am sufficient in myself. I have found a secret in the spirit that the Christ can strengthen a man. That Christ can strengthen a business, can strengthen a man of God, an ordinary man. You can dare to say regardless the causes, regardless the limitations within my city, regardless what they think can come out or cannot come out of me. That here is my verdict on the strength of this revelation. I can do all things, not some things. To say some things will be limiting the power that backs me through Christ through Christ which strengtheneth me so when you hear the testimonies that happen through the prayer platforms when you see the mighty things that God is doing through your ministry thank God for the man but make sure you look well see the olive trees too make sure you look well and see that beyond ordinary men is a mighty God that stands behind them. No man can just make progress. Men do not rise just by willpower. Hear me? It takes more than willpower. It takes more than determination. Every factor fails when the Holy Ghost is not there value fails when he's not there knowledge fails when he's not there 
skill will be barren and impotent when it's not there Abarike sopras kadesh I can do all things. I can do all things. You may be ordinary. My precious brother, my precious sister. You may be ordinary. Watching from across the globe. Wondering, can anything good come out of my life? I introduce you to the ministry of the helper. The paraclete. He is not a politician. He is not a king. He is not an elected person. The spirit of the living God who helps ordinary men to command tremendous levels of power. Can I tell you? Never laugh at a man who has submitted to the ministry and the help of the Holy Spirit. You will bury your head in shame for the rest of your life. Many of you will prefer running around looking for men and women of influence who can help you directly and yet ignore the greatest helper. Did the Bible not say except the Lord builds a house? It says they labor in vain. He never said they labor. They will not labor. But it is in vain that build it. That except the Lord watches the city. The watchman watched but in vain the bible says that it is vain to wake up early in the morning nigerians hear me and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow only god can give men rest man of god respectfully speaking please hear me there is a fountain that is greater than your limitation my uncle promised to give me money to build a church is a recipe for frustration when I sense you, lackest thou anything? The helper. We stand today by the privilege of God's grace as ordinary men who have been helped by God. He signed his signature upon our lives that the nation may lend the spirit again. That when an ordinary man unites with an extraordinary God the destiny becomes extraordinary so he says there is this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of power man of God hear me do not give up on your call and don't try to look for fame and try to move around saying invite me leave all that nonsense and stay with the Holy Spirit stay with the Holy Spirit you're a music artist. Don't jump from pillar to post saying, stay with the Holy Spirit. The greatest way to make yourself known is to make him known. Stay with the Spirit of God. In the place of prayer, in the place of fellowship, in the place of building. You see, let me warn you. Let me warn you. Walking with the Holy Spirit is usually not profitable when you start. So I warn you so that Satan who is the master of the flesh does not beguile you into naming your submission to him a waste of your time. If it is God you are walking with, you will be a fool for a very long time before the wisdom behind his dealings with you is revealed. So I'm giving you a word of caution. <laughs> Jesus was born of the spirit but it took him 30 years of living supposedly an aimless life but at 30 when he came in power in three and a half years he wrote something that cannot be erased forever when you walk with the holy spirit let me tell you the truth there is a side effect because you will have to give up on your will many times and that will put you in a position of perpetual insecurity in the flesh i don't know the name of where i'm going but i trust you who is leading me and like a baby who is walking even in the midst of your confusion one step after another while people laugh at you you keep following at a time you will ask yourself god where are we going what are you doing with my life but i can leave you with an assurance if it is the god of the bible leading you the day he presents you to your world like a trophy he will sign upon your life and it will become clear to all men that the god of the universe has shown you help Let's pray.
the one you helped has come to worship you the one you helped has come to worship you you are helper you're my helper you're my helper the one you've helped has come to worship you the one you've had I want you to pray a sincere prayer Lord I lean not on my own understanding I submit to the help of the Spirit someone open your mouth and pray I submit to the help of the Holy Spirit Spirit of the living God, come and help me in ministry. Come and help my family. Come and help my life. I'm tired of wallowing around in pride. I give up. I have guessed my own formula and done everything I know to do. It's only left me in pain. I submit to you. Spirit of the living God, Maranatha, come. 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 Someone pray just for a minute from the depth of your heart this is a mighty church of prayer help oh god i will lift up my eyes onto the hills he said from whence cometh my help my help cometh from the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. Hallelujah. Let me stand in faith with the grace that is upon this house and this altar and just speak over your life. Listen. Some of you may need to go back and listen to this teaching again and cry before the Lord and say 2023 cannot be like 2022 again. I've seen the difference. I've seen how I walk by my own strength. Now I want the Holy Spirit to help me. As a man of God, you will preach and be tired. You will do everything you do and be tired. But when he comes... Jesus said, I have many things to tell you. I have many things to show you. Hmm. But when he, the spirit of truth is come, he says, he will guide you. Very simple formula, yet very difficult. This is the reason why we do not glory in the flesh. As much as we thank God for all the human honor, the applauds that we receive, and to him be all the glory. But I tell you sincerely, any man who knows the Holy Spirit is helplessly submissive to him. Because to live without him is like standing in shame. You are programming shame to your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I stand in partnership with the grace that is upon this house. And I pray for someone, maybe a man of God, maybe a woman of God, maybe a prophet, maybe an apostle, maybe a business person, Maybe a mother, maybe a student, maybe a politician or some head of parliament somewhere who is in need of potent results by the Spirit. You've stretched yourself from pillar to post, from border to border, and now by this message, you have come to a point of acknowledgement that the missing factor in truth is the Holy Spirit. Maybe you have been pursuing power and you have ignored Him. Remember what I taught you. You receive power after. That a relationship with him, embracing him as a, the helper who comes to help your limitation is the key to an enviable life. I pray for you.
the grace to hunger after this ministry of the Holy Spirit receive it right now in Jesus name some of you by this night you will return and the Spirit of God will begin to reveal things to you he will open the pages of your destiny and with precision he will begin to guide you as a result of that guidance some of you will need to make a hundred and eighty degrees you turn because the direction you are currently following has nothing to do with your destiny may grace be revealed released upon you to make that turn if the need arises in the name of jesus christ it is my prayer that at the end of this year as a result of this conference that you will look at your life and it will be evident to you and to all that you have been helped by God. May Ebenezer rise for you. The one who helps men. The one who has helped your pastor, helped his wife, helped this ministry. I declare that he's helping you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Can you give me a minute, Pastor Jerry, to make an altar call? Will that be fine, please? I just sense in my heart my apologies have stretched the time I need to make an altar call when Pastor Jerry was prompting people I heard so many people shouting from multiple overflows and it is very important in a conference like this that when we gather and hear the Word of God and pray and cry it is important that we give people an opportunity to make it right with Jesus so hear me whether you are in the main auditorium or any of the overflows or perhaps you are watching from across the globe from Europe um, America somewhere in Africa or even in this nation we are getting to a time where we must never trivialize <coughs> salvation sometimes we make it look like the miracle of salvation is that cheap it took Jesus his life for that to happen and there's someone who came for this meeting tonight who is saying apostle if you will give me an opportunity, I truly want to make it right with Jesus. I do not want to leave this conference tonight without having a functional relationship with Jesus. Or there may be someone who is saying, I remember making this decision, but as it is right now, my life has gone haywire. Everything is scattered. I cannot even say that I have the assurance of salvation. I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. Now, here's what I want you to do for me. I will plead that in an orderly manner, those who are making that decision, if any, within this place, may I please request, if you can, to just gently step forward and come here. And all the other, all the other overflows, I want you to just step forward to the front of your LED screens. I'll just count one to five. I'm working on borrowed time. There has to be someone within this room and around who is saying, I want to make it right with Jesus Christ. There is no point pretending. Come. I'm counting one to five now. If you belong to that category, come. Let's celebrate them as they come. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Streams of joy. This is the best you can do. God bless you. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. Just spread yourselves here so that you don't inconvenience those who are standing. Thank you. Now, I see that the counselors are giving you a card. So whether you are here or those outside, for those who are making this salvation prayer, I believe that um, the various platforms that you're connecting from should give you a link where you indicate that you gave your life to Jesus Christ and then there will be a system to follow you up and you can indicate from whatever nation you're connecting from and that this is a decision that you made and the Lord himself will give you a new beginning. For all of you who are here, a form is being given to you now. I don't know if you will have all the time to fill it, but then I will pray with you and you are required to fill that form. And please, if and when you are called, your attention is called, do cooperate with all those who are responsible for the follow-up. This is for your salvation. I salute you on behalf of Jesus and even the angel over this house for making this bold decision to come to Jesus. Very quickly, let me request that you lift your right hand. You may just pause your filling the form right now. And all of you, I'm about to lead you to pray. Please make sure. Okay, I see an email there. Salvation at streams of joy. 
www.ministryofgodsupply.org. So do well to send an email immediately and say, Pastor Jerry, I just made this decision for Jesus and I'm ready to walk with him all the days of my life and you will be followed up adequately. Say this after me, lifting your right hand as a sign of surrender. Say, Lord Jesus. Say it again. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I have been convicted by your spirit right now i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again for my justification i receive jesus into my heart as my savior as my lord and as my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever i declare that i'm saved i'm a child of god i go forward ever and backward never amen father thank you for these precious ones your word declares that as many who will come to you you will in no wise cast away by the authority of scripture i declare your sins forgiven in the name of jesus i call you bona fide recipients of the life of god the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. Receive the grace to walk in righteousness. I commend you to the ministry of the Holy Spirit and to the word of God. May you be grounded and established in righteousness. You go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name I pray. Now very quickly, I'd like to request that you follow the aisles. There are people stretching their hands either to my left or to my right let's celebrate them as they go you will have a word very quickly with the counselors and then you will be back to your seat pastor jerry thank you again for this opportunity hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.